Hi Church, my name is Maddie Schulte and for those of you who don't know me, I'm the communications coordinator here at the church, so I'm the person behind the emails and website updates and even posting our Sunday services on YouTube. Um, I'm also on the worship team and one of the teachers for FM Kids. I'm really grateful to be with you today and to share with you a Wednesday word. One thing that I love about being a part of the body of Christ is that we all have unique personal stories of how we got to where we are now. The Lord has met us all in different ways, and yet we can all learn from each other's stories and relate with the different experiences that we've had. Though our stories may all look different, God has never changed. And when I hear the testimonies of others, I am captivated by who God is for each of us. So I felt like sharing a little bit of my life with you today with the hope that you might be reminded of who Jesus is and be encouraged by his goodness. So I grew up in a believing home with two loving parents and my two brothers. My dad was a self-taught artist and my mom was a homemaker, so money was often tight for us. For most of my childhood and teen years, we lived paycheck to paycheck, where our income was largely dependent on commissions that my dad would get, which was often very inconsistent. But the Lord always provided. My parents were always very intentional about telling us the specifics of God's provision. They would sit us all down and would tell us something like, I want to tell you about how God has provided for us this month. We didn't know that we'd be able to pay our electricity bill, but dad got uh, a job yesterday and already got his commission. God knew exactly what we needed and he provided for us at the perfect time. Time and time again, the Lord would provide. Now, one thing that you should know about me is that I have a fear of the unknown, the what ifs in life. I'm sure many of you can relate with this. When I am unable to prepare myself for a situation, I often, I often am overcome with worry and fear about what could happen. I've gotten a lot better, but when I was little, I would ask my mom every day before going to bed what we were going to do the next day so that I would have an idea of what to expect and could prepare myself just in case. No matter how things turned out, and no matter how many times the Lord provided, I would still become anxious when new unknowns would arise. Just before my senior year of high school, my family faced a big challenge. We found out that we were going to lose our house. And at the same time, my grandpa, who helped us many, many times through his generosity, passed away. It was a time of incredible loss and heaviness, especially for my parents. We didn't know where we were going to live, and we're also dealing with losing someone who is very special to us. Now, knowing what you know about me, how would you expect that I would react? I know I was only 17 at the time, and it was in no way my responsibility to figure all this out, but yes, I likely would have been overwhelmed with fear, worry, and anxiety about what would happen. But strangely enough, I felt a total sense of peace. I almost didn't recognize myself walking through that difficulty like, who is she? Dealing with this with such poise and grace? I couldn't tell you, but I just knew that God would work it out. He always did. If he could handle such small worries of my day to day, couldn't he handle this too? Well, he did. He provided for us. Psalm 30, 11 through 12 says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Not only did the Lord provide the basics of what we needed, but even more. God continued to use my grandpa even after he passed away. In his generosity, he left us an inheritance in which we were able to get a home, and feel a sense of security and knowing we didn't need to worry about having um, what we needed anymore. Here are a few verses that have encouraged me when I was crippled with fear and anxiety. Philippians 4, 4 through 9 speaks directly to worry and gives direction in what we can do when we feel that way. It says, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I also really love Matthew 6, 25 through 34. The title of this in my Bible is Do Not Worry, which couldn't be more fitting. The verses remind us of how God sees us, provides for us, and carries us through. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grasses of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow and is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. So I hope that my story of God's provision reminds you of his great faithfulness to us. He cares about us. He longs for us to know him and to strive after his kingdom. He's our provider, and we can trust in him in all circumstances. Let's pray. God, we give you great glory this morning for the ways that you have provided for us and shown us your grace and your mercy when we are struggling and feeling worry and overcome by the weight of this world. You are our provider. Lord, we trust you. And I just pray that we would think and dwell on the things that are from above, that we would think about the ways that you have provided for us in the past and that we would use those and that we would trust in you and be reminded of your great faithfulness and love for us. In your holy name, amen. Thank you for having me today. And I just pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you close and that you can cast all your cares on him. This has been Wednesday Word with the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. We hope that you will join us for worship this week. Our home church video will be posted at 7 o'clock a.m. on our YouTube channel, and we will be meeting for worship under the tent in our upper parking lot at 9.30 a.m. We hope to see you there.